Hello and welcome to the TMC Newsroom. My name is Rich Tarani. Thank you for watching us today. On our program is Warren Son, and he is the Director of Product Management and Marketing at Epigee. Uh, Epigee, as you may know, is a company providing communication solutions for small to medium companies. Uh, Warren, how are you? Doing well. Thanks for bringing me in, Rich. I appreciate it. Uh, it's our pleasure, and uh, I've, I've certainly been following your company since its inception. Uh, seven, eight years ago, something yep, like that? About that. Right? And uh, you've grown a lot. You've grown... You've gotten younger. What, what's that? You've gotten younger. I've gotten younger. Well, if anyone's seen my picture, <laughs> nothing's going to get younger than that picture on the internet. But uh, <laughs> I don't... I certainly don't feel you. <laughs> but you guys have gone up market and you've grown yeah. quite a bit. And that's what I was hoping we could talk about today is um, just what are some of the new things that your company has come out with? Right. Yeah, so back then, you know, we had a eight port system, you know, and that was pretty groundbreaking for us there and uh, was, was really exciting. But, um, you know, a lot of changes. Last time we spoke, I think we covered um, some mid-tier products that we kind of launched to replace some of the legacy systems from those, you know, six years ago when we designed them. Uh, so that was kind of a good move. A lot of customers were happy to see that change. Uh, the Quadro M8L was one of them, and actually... Um, over the past year and a bit, it's got three awards just for that product. Congratulations. So now, the development's still in Armenia? Is that yes, sir. So we one do of all the of our companies that I know in tech that, that has yeah. all the development in Armenia. Yeah, so we do all our software and hardware development out there, and then we manufacture them here in uh, Dallas area. So they're actually made here, which gives us a unique ability to go run over to the CM and, and uh, make sure products reach delivery and not get stuck in China. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they... You know, those, those products we talked about last time have been doing well, and then we kind of shifted years again to growing the portfolio. You know, over the years we've been growing it, growing it, and we had to take a step back, kind of re-engineer some of the products that existed because, you know, needs change. Needs change over time. So we adjusted all of our, our mid-tier and low-tier products, and now it's time for some new stuff. So we'll cover that today. Um, so the video conferencing, that got uh, best SMB solution at the last show. A really cool tool. A lot of uh, demand out there and, and hype on the video conferencing, so we wanted to be there and to provide that solution when customers actually need it. Um, but what we've got now is our system's capped at about 200 users. That's where we've been for the past, I'd say, year and a half. It's kind of our, our top tier. Uh, what we did is really focus on enhancing those solutions that covered the 100 to 200 market. So the larger business uh, from the SMB space and the small enterprise. So we enhance those products to add things like the call recording, video audio conferencing, ACD for call centers, and a bunch of other features for those customers. What we started seeing is people started buying that 200 port system, the QA, uh, Quadro M32X, and started stacking it. And they wanted to stack it to get the higher port counts. Apparently over the years people have uh, developed a uh, I guess, comfort zone with Epigee, uh, the sense of reliability with our product, and felt comfortable stacking those units. So we had to do something to kind of provide a solution that would scale without having to stack these products. So over the last uh, six months, I believe, we've been focusing heavily on a QX1000 product. I think we briefly mentioned that last time. Sure. Uh, it's in beta phase right now. We actually have about five customers that are willing to put that in as a beta tester just to get the product in their office. So that solution starts at about 200 users and scales to 1,000. Again, it's going to have all the features that are standard on our products, like the, uh, the video audio conferencing, just higher capacity, call recording, ACD, as well as the uh, barge in, silent monitoring, whispering features. If you ever used those before, uh, you're probably familiar with it from uh, like digital PBX space. What that is is the ability for you, know, you, to, uh, you and I to be on the phone and let's say uh, I'm, I'm new to the company, I'm being trained and I'm talking to you as a customer and you ask me a question like, hey, what's, what was that promotion we were talking about last week? And I run a blank and somebody else is training me, they can whisper to me on the phone right. and say, hey, it was that promotion and I can answer you and just keep on going. So some cool features like that as well. So that'll be integrated into the QX1000 and we're hoping to conclude the beta at the end of June start launching in July. So that'll take us from 200 to 1,000 users and really get into the uh, enterprise space uh, so correctly. If a customer or potential customer is watching right now, what are some of the reasons they should be choosing Epigee 
as opposed to other hardware companies? You know, there's a lot of different solutions out there. Um, it can get a little confusing for customers. Where we kind of play are the solutions that people might be familiar with, like the old Nortels, Avias, Cisco's. They're purpose-built devices. They're based upon hardware and software made by that company to work well. It is not an open source load of software on a PC that you can buy down the road. So we're developing solutions that are designed to work and work well. You know, that's really our primary focus. We are fully open standards, so we work with any SIP compliant device out there, but we're going to provide a solution that will be, you know, up more than most. It's um, no moving parts, so it's fully solid state, so a higher uh, MTBF. Uh, and you know, it's just, it's just really reliable solutions. What's another kind of a cool aspect is we do not only sell in the US. We sell globally, so we get feedback globally, which allows us to enhance our, uh, enhance our products from all of those you know, customers and resellers at a global level. Right. So there's a lot, of, a lot of features built into these solutions. You know, nowadays, you know, from, from the other hat I wear of product management, I used to get years ago just a lot of feature requests. I mm -hmm. used to have lists and lists of feature requests. Just don't see them anymore. Right. You know, we've covered a lot of the a lot of the aspect. Now it's just having those features work well for the customers, and and make sure it's it's simple and easy to use. So we have the features, we have the reliability, and you know, if there's one bad side to Epigee, it's just us trying to make it easier to use a box sure. with all those features now. Sure. So a growing pain. So we spent a lot of time actually for the QX1000 since it's so big. Um, customers have the advantage of having configured an eight port box by doing that they can configure a thousand port box right. same interface and that's kind of another uh, uh, great aspect of Epigee is once you have built one solution put one solution in you know how to do them all right. but uh, you know the the downside is you put in an eight port system that's eight phones you multiply that by a hundred it can get a little complex we wanted to launch the QX1000 at the beginning of the year. We actually delayed it on purpose to enhance the GUI to speed up that process. So we've made some changes to the interface. We've also added an outside config tool to where you can populate the system before you launch it with all of the phone details, all of that, to make it a lot easier. You know, so our, our focus is, has been in the past about enhancing all the features and getting everything our customers need. Now it's on how to make it easier to work with. And there's no point in providing a do everything box that would take you a month to figure out and is just a real pain to configure. So our focus is, you know, originally was on the customers to try and give them everything they needed. Now we need our resellers to be successful out there. We need them to be able to put these solutions in, provide the features to the customers quickly and effectively, and move on to the next site. So as we grow the portfolio, we are focusing a lot on making it easier to work with our products. You know. So as the the hype of the cloud continues. How do you see competition from cloud-based vendors um, affecting your company? Right, so you've got the one side of it, which is like just the plain hosted scenario. We do see that, and there's scenarios where we say, hey, that is a better solution for you, but it's usually on the smaller end, you know, the under 10 users where a customer wants our thousand port system feature set on a few phones. That's beautiful for them and that's usually the best scenario. You know, there's some other strategies going on right now in alignments for some more cloud-based computing. I'm just not sure where, where they're going with it yet. You know, there's providing those features and, and whatever else to the end customers in their office, but again, it still falls under the umbrella of hosted and the pains of hosted and the benefits of hosted are still the same. So we'll see, you know, there's, there's ideas of putting Asterisk solutions out in the cloud. It's great to have all that power behind these systems, so you don't have that kind of, um, you know, server limitation. There's no real boundary on on the size of these solutions, but it's still the same fundamental issue of what happens if I have a glitch in my internet coming into the building. You know, we have a lot of good providers out there for voice services and data services, but unfortunately, that last mile is still. Sure. Still could be an issue. Sure. So, well, and there are also security issues that some companies right. just don't want to put their information. Uh, you know, that's that's a plus for. I would say that that fits on both sides. Uh, it could be uh, the security side. It could be a plus to go to the cloud, so you don't have to worry about your system getting hacked in your office. But then you've got the issue of someone just doing an all service attack on your IP to your office. Well, I'm, I would be more concerned uh, at 
and those are very valid, but I'd be more concerned about having my information and my calls right. tapped into forever without me being aware that they're being tapped into. It can into happen. Because they live somewhere else. Right. So that's, I mean, those are just challenges of... Well, look at um, PlayStation. Right. I mean, exactly. that, that was huge. And I want you for a week. We don't, still don't know what the actual impact was. Right, and we don't know were, were people actually we able to see what, what other people right. were doing in their homes. It's kind of, and that's an interesting point that you're making, and we're getting totally off topic, but I've got a PlayStation Xbox Connect in my house. It's got a camera, and what happens if right. that gets hacked into? Can somebody people, people have already hacked on? the camera. They've hacked the camera, but they've got to get through the network to get to it. But it's, it's possible. So, I mean, that, it just... These are some of the issues. I mean, the cloud's yeah. awesome for so many things, but it's also yeah. got its drawbacks. No, that's true. So it's worth discussing. So what that. we've done is we've actually seen a lot of issues with uh, the premise-based solutions being hacked. Over the years, we've added uh, intrusion detection as well. So we've, we've really locked down our systems as, to protect them. The downside, though, is remote extensions become a little bit more of a challenge. Right, right. Uh, yes. But beyond that, we've, we've tried to enhance that. You know, something else we added, Getting back on topic, I guess, is uh, a new feature coming out is uh, an auto dialer application. Mm. You go to a doctor's office, wherever sure. it is, uh, pharmacy, you get contacted on your appointment or your prescriptions ready. We added a tool where you can just fire it up next to a, a, any Epigee PBX and then start making the calls for you to... to just to speed things up. Yeah, just to speed so things up. You know, we've had, in the morning we have a lot of customers that are smaller offices. There's right. a, and a couple doctors and three other admins running around doing everything they can. Some In the, some cases, they spend half their day trying to make phone calls to reach these right. clients to keep the doctors busy. Right. We wrote a tool to streamline that to where that admin can populate a list have the system place the calls real time, after hours, whatever they like, and they can react to whatever options that client has decided to pick. Okay. So you would get a prompt to say, yes, I'm cool with the time, I'll be there, I need to re reschedule, or I need to talk to a representative right now because maybe my case just became more severe, maybe I've got terrible toothache and I need an emergency uh, situation now. So we've added that tool. Uh, it actually came out of our Latin American market. So again, oh, okay. the, the benefit of us playing in different areas, sure. uh, we get to kind of grow the portfolio with whatever needs are out there. So in our final 30 seconds, what's next? You know, the QX1000, the 1000 port, and the auto dollar are our current uh, focuses. We want to get those out in the next couple of months, get them, get them done, move on. We want to start working on a HUD for our solution. We're also launching uh, an Android app. Heads up display. Uh, yeah, the heads-up display. Uh, we're launching an Android app, which is going to be very similar to the iPhone app we launched last year. Okay. Uh, both are cool players, but uh, I would say the HUD's going to be consume a lot of our time over the course of the year, and then just growing our, our foreign markets and keep on pushing. Great. Well, thanks for being on the program. Great I to really see you, as appreciate always. it. Thanks, Rich.